the way I approach designing a lot of technology actually comes from our ancestors, our kupuna. I'm from the Big Island of Hawaii. This kind of circular approach comes from this system that we have called the Ahupua'a system. It's a land management system. It's a harmonious system. It's a balanced system. If you were to think of islands and island systems as like a giant pie, like a key lime pie, you divide it up into individual pieces of pie. You would have portions that extend from the mountains to the sea. And what we're doing is we're taking advantage of gravity itself and altitude and using natural irrigation routes to have phytonutrients from one system where maybe you're growing lychee that goes into a taro patch and then those phytonutrients go into a fish pond where we've stacked a whole bunch of lava stones so there's tiny little holes. Fish can come in and, and feed on the reef but by the time they grow up they're too large to leave and so we have a natural fishery. And then we take the waste after we've eaten all this fish and we bring it up to the top of the trophic system. And it creates a circular dynamic where you have zero waste. We have iteratively perfected these systems over thousands and thousands of years. So for the casual onlooker, it probably looks invisible. So John Muir rocks up with his dumbass hat and his beard and he's like, this place looks pristine and perfect. But the reality is, is that the system has been iteratively perfected for thousands of years. My name is Keolu Fox, and I am the first Kanaka Maole or native Hawaiian to receive a PhD in genome sciences. I am a multi-time founder, including the UCSD Indigenous Futures Institute, the uh, Earth Friendly Computation, Native Biodata Consortia, Wise Ancestors, and Lab to Land Research Institute. We actively try to apply many of these circular economic concepts and principles to a lot of the companies we create. So in the case of Variant Bio, we have something called a benefit sharing program. This means that if we engage and create partnerships with a specific indigenous community and let's say Nepal or the Tuamotu or Tahiti, we don't just sequence their genome, steal their data, run it through a machine learning based algorithm, identify novel intellectual property, develop a drug, put it on the market and not give them anything. We give them at least 4% of the proceeds for the development of it. And really it's a beautiful idea. It's quite poetic because if you think about the fact that indigenous people's genomes have been shaped by those geographies over thousands of years and we are now giving them parts of the proceeds for novel IP that was designed because of their relationship with that place. And now we can give them royalties and financial support so that they can buy back the land that was taken from them. The same exact land that shaped their genome in the first place. It's poetry in motion. My background is in genome sciences, human genetics, sequencing and editing, technology development, and using those methods and creating technologies in those spaces, we process and store a lot of data. My experiences in data centers through genomics has really allowed me to understand the environmental impact and the consequences of this addiction to data. And our simultaneous addiction to data and fossil fuels at the same damn time is not a good thing. And this led me to start thinking about and prioritizing circular and balanced systems in computation. So, and that, that has helped us define this field of earth-friendly computation. And there are a lot of different ways that I've incorporated this into companies that I've started. You know, I started kind of consulting for companies like 23andMe and I noticed that they were selling access to their database to companies like GSK for $300 million. And you look at that and you're like, man, you asked these people to pay you $150 to tell you what your grandmother already told you. And then you sold their data to Big Pharma and they have nothing to show for it. In direct conflict with that, we started Variant Bio, knowing that people deserve a percentage of royalties from information that's really derived from their genealogy. And it's been wildly successful. That same principle of circularly sharing proceeds has guided the development of so many new ideas. What we're working on with, with all of our new projects 
in terms of earth-friendly computation is in search of and trying to optimize things for harmony and balance. Data centers are not in balance. GPUs are not in balance. They are optimized for profit and exponential growth and a scale up that is currently in conflict with sustainability and the health of this planet, our atmosphere and the heat emissions that are coming out of large scale data centers are a huge problem that are literally in the background of everything that's going on in terms of this AI revolution. AI is quite literally the new plastic. And some of its applications are good and important and necessary. And others will lead to our demise. It's not the doomer and boomer thing that is traditionally represented in the media. What we're talking about is the fact that heat emissions from data centers will surpass the fossil fuel industry as the number one contributor to the climate crisis in our lifetimes. And if we don't optimize technologies for balance, circularity, and harmony, we are going to cook ourselves. More than ever, people need to take this seriously because the technologies that we're designing are not independent of the second law of thermodynamics, which is entropy which means that you can't have something for nothing. You can't run the limitless ambition of applying an LLM to everything and it not have consequences on the environment. So for example, TSMC, which is the largest chip manufacturing fab on planet Earth, they're located in Taiwan. They're moving their new fab to America, but they didn't think about where they're going to put this massive plant that is going to create tons of waste and is going to be extremely harmful for the environment because they chose to move it to the great state of Arizona. And when you think about the design of this new fab, it can go a lot of different directions. It could be that they integrated renewable systems. They're thinking about the heat emission footprint of what will be this new manufacturing fab and plant in the United States of America in a city in Phoenix where the temperature is regularly over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Or it could have been built in a place that is sustainable. So the examples I like to think of are the Ahupua'a system, which I just described, which is like we're building things in harmony with the environment circularly. I need cooling, so I should build this in a place where I have access to water that will help me cool this data center. And if you look at the results for Microsoft's newest venture, you know that their water consumption increased 34% since the release of ChatGPT. And all of that water is evaporated to cool chips, which allow us to run various types of machine intelligence based algorithms. So my point is we need to think more carefully about where we build data centers. Maybe Alexandria, Virginia makes sense for you politically in terms of tax kickbacks, but it's not good for the planet. You didn't make that because that was a sustainable decision. You made that because it adheres to the will of your board members because financially it makes sense. But there is a future that is rooted in indigenous values where we design technologies because they're in harmony with the environment. We know that data centers should be built in different places. And so I would just beg people like Deb Halland, the, the chief of the Department of, Interior, of the Interior, who's a brilliant indigenous futurist herself, and say, why aren't you incentivizing certain states to build data centers that have the resources you need to make them sustainable. Places like Iowa, where there's tons of wind capacity. Places like the Big Island of Hawaii, where we have geothermal capacity. Places where you have gradient shifts, in, where there are estuaries. Why aren't we thinking more boldly about how to build data centers in harmony with the environment? Why are we optimizing them every time for profit and exponential growth? For the most part, this is what I do with the companies that I'm, I'm founding, that I'm uh, involved in the background, pulling the strings of things is how do we make things circular? 
how do we make things balanced and how do we create a new platform for indigenous futurism to guide the development of technology. If you need help with many of these ideas, then you should recruit indigenous people in meaningful positions beyond a cultural advisory board. You should actually listen to these people. You should compensate them fairly. You should help them buy back their land because that is the fastest way to heal this planet. But anything superficial and all of the Silicon Valley Kool-Aid you're drinking, come on. I mean, really? I think that we need to put the planet before profitability. And in Hawaii, we have this ancient saying, and it is that we're walking backwards into the future. We're recognizing the mistakes that we've already made. We know that the aina, the land, is the, the, the chief, and we are its helper. We are subservient to it. These hierarchical approaches where we've put humanity above our planet, it's like that is doomed for failure. And we have to reprioritize the way we, we develop technology. I hope that these circular approaches, like treating a data center like an ahupua'a, I hope that, that that concept philosophically is a paradigm shift. I hope that it results in earth-friendly computation and methods to do that. I hope that those technologies lead to not just a balance or rebalance or recalibration, but an opportunity to rejuvenate and heal our atmosphere and our oceans.